the trenches with Dave Lappin, presented by First Star Logistics. Breaking Bengals news as we get ready for week one of the 2024 NFL season. New England Patriots coming to Paycor Stadium. Dave Lappin was at Zach Taylor's press conference. A lot of little things came out in that press conference. Dave, let's start with the uh, players we expect to see this coming Sunday. Yeah, Zach Taylor, you know, made the announcement that uh, Trent Brown will be going at the at the right tackle position. And uh, when you when you think about it, not a huge surprise. Uh, Mims has not been able to practice. He hasn't been able to do much physically. He was out on the field today, uh, nearly stages with helmet and shoulder pads on, but really was not participating in any kind of drills, hitting a sled or anything else. And I can identify with where he's at. Where he's at. I had a uh, you know a pectoral injury and. The final stages of it is when you try to fully extend, you know, and, and, and really put pressure on that uh, on that pectoral. That's, uh, you know, that's that's when the rubber meets the road as such. So I, I think he's probably pretty close. But why set him back? And the other part of it is Trent Brown was a New England Patriot last year. Trent Brown knows exactly what the New England Patriot defensive linemen are going to try to do to him uh, and to his teammates. And he's been a, a, a big source of information for the rest of the offensive linemen in terms of, hey, this is what he tries to do. His is counter to this technique and all that goes along with that. Ted Karras, same way. Uh, Mike Gesicki, same way. And, and these guys are the more experienced guys on the football team. I mean, Trent Brown's going into his 10th year. He's got more experience than any player on the roster with the Cincinnati Bengals. Ted Karras is going into his ninth. Both of those guys are 31 years old. They're grizzled veterans that have all kinds of uh, knowledge uh, about the National Football League. And very specifically, they were teammates on a Super Bowl champion New England Patriot team. So, and Gesicki not only uh, played with the Patriots and, and knows those guys from practice and all that, he was a Miami Dolphin for five years playing against those guys. So, I mean, it, there's, a, there's a wealth of knowledge in that locker room. And, you know, coaches, I mean, it's great. Coaches can answer questions for you. You can watch tape to get questions answered. But. When you can go to a, a teammate, a former teammate, and ask that former teammate, look, what's this guy thinking in this situation, do you think? You know you know his personality. You know his makeup. I mean, it's just little things that can make a difference at crunch time. And uh, I think that's a – it's you know, it's not a huge factor. I mean, it's not worth 10 points or 14 points if you're a better an you know, odds maker or whatever. But it's 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 real because I've been there, and I've, I've done it. I've gone to teammates that came from uh, teams that we were playing – and I'm like, give me the lowdown. Give me the scoop on this guy. Not just as a football player. You know, what's he like? What, what, how smart is he? You know, uh, how quickly do you think he's an, make an adjustment kind of guy? And I mean, all, all that stuff that can, you know, just little nuances that can maybe, you know, really help you during the course of the game at crunch time. Lap, let me, you know, we, we, we talked about the offensive side of the ball, but really a, a lot of people have been watching that defensive battle at corner. And looks like Dax Hill is the guy who's going to get the first chance to claim that position. And I think that's a very wise way to put it, Dave, first chance. You know, it's like, all right, you're getting the opportunity in the opener, but, you know, it's not <laughs> – you have, you have to perform every single week. And that's the way – if you're a professional football player, and that's – Anthony Munoz was a perennial pro bowler. Anthony Munoz every week approached his craft like he had to go win the job again. And that's what made him great. That's what makes great players Hall of Famers, like he became. Um, and and that's that's how all players should should approach it. Uh, Dax Hill, obviously, no exception, because you know DJ Turner's breathing down his neck. It was a great competition. You have to pick somebody. It doesn't mean that DJ Turner's not going to play, and he's going to play. I mean, he's the third corner. He's going to play. Lou Anarumo's got packages with three corners. And it doesn't mean that when two cornerbacks are out in the field that uh, the entire game is going to be Dax Hill out there with Cam Taylor Britt. It might be DJ Turner some. It might be a rot rotational thing. But this particular week, you know, Dax Hill has been named the guy that's going to start the game against the New England Patriots. And it'd be wise for Dax Hill to approach it. You know what? I have to perform uh, to the best of my ability against the Patriots. So, you know, next week, you know, I I'm, I'm the starter in uh, Kansas City that 425 game out in Kansas city and working against Patrick Mahomes and, and all those great receivers. That's a, a far different cry than the, from the group of receivers that he's been working against, against the New England Patriots. So, um, you know, it's, that, that's life in the NFL. It's a, uh, it's a competitive environment. And as soon as you feel complacent, uh, yeah, whew, exhale, I'm the starter. 
man, it can, it can be problematic. You still have to go out and compete every single snap of every single practice to keep your job. Dave Lapham in the trenches is brought to you by first star logistics. First star logistics is currently hiring freight agents. They are an asset based company with 24 seven support unsaturated agent network, the highest commission percentage in the industry and over 30,000 pre-screened carriers. Visit firststarlogistics.com backslash careers for more information about opportunities with one of the fastest growing companies in Cincinnati. And as Dave and I can tell you, a great place to work at. Lap, let me turn the tables a little bit away from the on-field stuff. And, you know, it doesn't, I don't think at times get enough talk, but captains on a football team, uh, multifaceted. The Bengals announced their captains today. Zach led his press conference with that. And basically, you know, no surprise, Joe Burrow, Ted Karras, Orlando Brown Jr. on offense, Sam Hubbard, Von Bell back as a captain after being away for one season, Jermaine Pratt on defense, and Davis Gaither and Evan McPherson as the special teams captains. What does it mean for a team when you have this type of leadership? And as Zach Taylor stressed, there could have been 20 different guys put in this position as being a captain. No doubt. And, you know, and that, that's a great thing. That's a great thing for coaching staff, you know, and Zach is, is big on communicating with his, with his uh, team and he has a committee, you know, a leadership committee, and it might not be just captains. He may be bringing other people from other position groups uh, in, involved in those leadership meetings, depending on what's going on inside the locker room, outside the locker room and all over the place uh, in terms of the community with the football team. So, uh, he, that, that's a comforting feeling for Zach Taylor to not only have eight guys that have been elected captain, but to have a dozen or more that, that were viable candidates to be elected captain. And I, I think they're all great choices. Jermaine Pratt is a very, very intelligent football player. He's a football savant. I mean, Lou Anarumo will tell you that he sees it. He's one of those guys that sees it before it happens. And while we're talking about Jermaine Pratt, how about the fact that uh, he and Jacoby Brissett overlap for a couple of seasons in South Carolina. So if anybody knows the mindset of Jacoby Brissett, it would be Jermaine Pratt. And Jermaine Pratt knows that Jacoby Brissett is a guy that will extend and create plays. He can hurt you with his feet as well as that throwing arm. But now that he's got a few years on him in the National Football League, will he do that? Will he take a chance on getting hit and getting hurt? Or will he slide? Will he go to the ground? So, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting, but um, that that's a little a little tidbit that uh, that that is interesting. And, and you look at Jacoby Brissett; he's been with five different teams in five years. Originally drafted by the New England Patriots, like I said, to be a backup to Tom Brady, and now he comes back for a repeat performance. He was drafted in 2017, and there he is again as a New England Patriot. And um, his he's with offensive coordinator Alex Van Pelt. When they were up at Cleveland together, Jacoby Brissett had 11 starts for the Cleveland Browns with Alex Van Pelt as the quarterback coach. So obviously there's a little bit of a, you know, a, a, a dynamic going on between those two as well. They know each other very, very well. So I'm telling you the national football league is one big neighborhood. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody seems to have a relationship with everybody else. It is crazy. And uh, Jacoby Brissett, interestingly enough, uh, has, has some things that are going on as he prepares for this football game. You know, uh, Logan Wilson and, and Jermaine Pratt are, are both cut from that cloth at the linebacker position. And I think uh, that gets a lot of respect from his teammates and the way he goes about preparing for games, the way he goes about taking care of his body, uh, you know, training, uh, nutrition, all of it, the entire package. So, um, you know, congratulations to Jermaine Pratt. I was talking to Lando Brown. I said, big oh, hey, baby, here you go. He goes, my first time, first time in the NFL. I said, well, now you got high school college and NFL where you've been a captain across the board. He goes, yeah, man. And it's really humbling. I said, well, you're in a small fraternity. Now there's not a whole lot of guys that can go around the country saying, yeah, I was a captain of my high school college and professional football teams. That's big. So, you know, that, that kind of struck me as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I think that they, they made good choices and, and it's, it's just a heck of a thing for the football team when there are so many guys that would have been good choices. It just, you know, it speaks to once again, what Duke Tobin and his crew have done. 
in terms of not only bringing in great football players, but bringing in players that can basically carry on the culture that uh, Zach Taylor wants to have carried on with his football team and uh, continue to build that culture. And that's, that's, that's very, very important. And like, like Zach said, you know, he wants to have a, a group of captains that when uh, that are problem solvers and when something, something arises in the locker room, get it taken care of in the locker room. Don't, don't kick it upstairs to the coach. Don't make the head coach get involved or a position coach or whatever, get it done, get it worked out amongst teammates. And I think this football team is more than capable of doing that kind of thing. And honestly, I don't think they're going to have to worry about too much. I think it's going to be very minor things. Uh, like Zach said, sometimes guys have problems with, you know, how the team travels and if they want to voice uh, their opinion on it, they can do it through a captain. And sometimes it take, has legs and sometimes it doesn't. But I mean, it's, uh, I, I really think that from that type of uh, a standpoint in terms of togetherness, cohesiveness, um, everybody buying into the culture, this football team is in a very, very good spot. Preseason football, done. Training camp, done. It is now time for the NFL season to kick off Thursday night, but the Bengals play Sunday, September 8th, 1 p.m. kickoff, and you can listen to all the action on the First Star Logistics Bengals radio network. Dave Lapham, Dan Horde will be on the call. Lap, I know you've got to be excited. I'm very excited. You know, and I, I asked Zach, I said, okay, well, you've decided that Trent's going to go in, instead of Mims to start the football game. If something, God forbid, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking something happens with Trent. So I, I said, is, is Mims uh, your emergency guy at this point? And Zach said, you know, we're going to determine that during the course of the week. So he's, he's either going to be an emergency offensive tackle or deactivated for the first game. So that, that'll be, you know, how, how much more is he going to be able to do at practice during the course of the week? How comfortable do the medical staff and the coaches, you know, collectively uh, think that they should push it with him and see where he is? You know, do you give it another week? So there's, there's probably 50-50 right now as to if Mims would be the emergency tackle or, in fact, he'll be deactivated, the game, deactivated for the game. You know, and then you got Cody Ford out there at the right tackle position uh, in an emergency situation, and in Kirkland, who would be up potentially as well, because now you got some issues. You know, some um, boy, we're, we're a little bit thin out there, mate, because Kirkland could play inside and outside. But as we know, uh, his first snaps at right tackle occurred this preseason at any level. So you know, he's much more comfortable at left tackle, but he did a solid job at right tackle. That's why I think Cody Ford would potentially be the first option because he has played more right tackle than Kirkland has. But, you know, we shall see. We'll see how those dominoes fall as the week unfolds. And, uh, you know, I mean, injuries are real. I mean, the Patriots are dealing with some as well. That's, that's life in the National Football League there. No two ways about it, Dave. We appreciate your support of Dave Lapham in the Trenches presented by First Star Logistics. Please help us continue growing the channel by hitting that like button. Subscribe if you've not done so. And also tell other Bengals fans around the country – that you can go to Dave Lapham in the Trenches, brought to you by First Star Logistics, for some of the best interviews you will find anywhere on the internet or wherever you get your podcast. Lap, as always, a pleasure talking with you. I know this is going to be a big week. We have a lot of things planned on in the trenches with Dave Lapham, so everyone needs to stay tuned to what's coming out there. That's why it's important to hit that subscribe button and get those notifications when things come out. For Dave Lapham, this has been Dave Burke. Who day? Who day, Dave? Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. King.